So my name is GYC. Uh, I'm a software engineer in Yahoo. I'm going to move to Hortonworks. And I'm also a member in the Apache Hadoop PMC. I'm also a mathematician. So my interest in, in uh, distributed computing, algorithms, and number theories. So here is the agenda. So I will first give an introduction. Then I will talk about integer multiplication using MapReduce. And then I will talk about a new world record and the machine behind the computation. So introduction. Uh, nowadays, uh, many companies using Hadoop in their production system. Uh, most of the applications include uh, search, calling, text processing, machine learning. However, it's still not yet very commonly used in uh, scientific or mathematical ap applications. Uh, why? Uh, here are two reasons. First reason is that we don't have a a math, uh, math with deal math library. And more fundamentally, many math, math, math with deal math algorithm are not yet uh, well studied. Uh, do we really don't have a uh, math with deal math library? Uh, not exactly. We have some, uh, we have Apache Maha. It's a, a machine learning library. It includes some package for ma matrix operation. And we also had Apache Humor. It had a, a matrix computational package. Uh, but however, what do mathematicians uh, interested, uh, what kind of problem they're interested? Uh, one, uh, most popular, one of the most, pop most popular problem is uh, integer factoring. So if you can do integer factoring, you can break RSA crypto system. So in 2009, a 768-bit RSA model was factored. And we are also interested in uh, solving puzzle differential equations. And there's a lot of application. Uh, we can, uh, there's a lot of application in full dynamic, uh, electromagnetic some uh, financial analysis. Uh, we also want to compute complex zeros of uh, Riemann zeta function. So in Riemann hypothesis, it says that all the non trivial complex zeros lie in the critical strip. Uh, if we try to compute some uh, long trivial complex zeros. If we can find one of the complex zeros outside the critical strip, then we disprove we might have offices. And we will get a uh, million dollar. It's a happy ending. <laughs> However, a real hypothesis is unlikely to be false. Uh, may, most mathematicians um, believe that is true. So in such case, we obtain more evidence that support real hypothesis. So it's also happy. Uh, the other problem include uh, computing pi or other mathematical concerns. So in August 2010, Yi and Kandu, uh, they computed five trillion decimal digits. And in, year, uh, in July 2010, uh, myself and the Yahoo Cow community, uh, we computed the tooth quadrant bit of pi. Uh, what are the missing functionality uh, we don't have? One major algorithm we don't have is fast Fourier transform. So this is the basic routine of most and many uh, algorithms. And we also uh, want to have a, a library support arbitrary precision arithmetic. So we, we want to compute some integer function, falling point function, complex function, et cetera. So let's talk about how do we do integer modification with map videos. Uh, why we are interested in map, uh, integer modification? Uh, one reason is that there exist fast algorithms. And the second reason is that the most, uh, many other uh, uh, there are many applications. Uh, ma uh, for example, we can do division, uh, logarithm, and trigonometric function. Uh, here is a diagram of the periodicity of algorithms. Um, in the wood, we have a uh, product. So if you can do uh, integer modification, we can do reciprocal, we can uh, do quotient, we can do logarithm, we can do exponential, we can do powering, etc. So product is the basic uh, algorithm. And how do we do integer modification? Uh, we have a variety of algorithms. And the fastest algorithm are uh, FFT-based. And all the FFT-based algorithms, uh, the running time will be O, N, not N, and then there's a tail. And here, N is the number of bits of the input integer. And 
the scale we are talking about is terabit integer. So we are going to use a terabit or terabytes to store a single integer. Uh, in FFT-based algorithm, there are a bunch of variety. Uh, today we are going to talk about score and Schwarzen. So the running time will be O, N log N, log log N. So uh, the idea behind uh, FFT-based algorithm is that uh, we, we have this uh, beautiful convolution theorem. So we can compute convolution with a discrete Fourier transform and component-wise modification. And what uh, score strassen algorithm does is that we represent integer as polynomial. And then we compute convolution with DFTs. Uh, why we want to compute convolution? Because when we compute convolution, it means we, we got the uh, product of polynomial. And here are the steps of uh, SSA. So we have two input integer. And then uh, in the first step, we compute two uh, DFT. And then we compute a component one modification. And, we compute, and then we compute a DFT inverse. So here, P, the DFT inverse, the P is the product polynomial. However, the coefficient will be very, maybe too large, and we need to perform a final step for normalization. Uh, yeah. um, how do we compute DFT? So DFT can be computed uh, by a family of algorithm called fast Fourier transform. So DFT is the form, and FFT is the algorithm. And inside this FFT family, we have a bunch of uh, variety, and today we, go, we are going to talk about uh, parallel FFT. Uh, before we talk about the algorithm, we need a data model to store the integer. How do we do it? Uh, we have a terabyte integer. And we are going to represent an integer as a d-dimensional tuple. And we are going to write d is equal to i times j. And we, have, we are going to define xi as a, as, as a j-dimensional tuple. And then we have uh, i such tuples. And we, when we put all of them together, we form a matrix. And we call this the IJ format of x. Uh, each xi is a sequence of j record, and each record is a key value pair. So for example, in the record zero, we have the key i, and the value is uh, xi. In record one, we have uh, j plus i, and value is uh, xj plus i. And we are going to use, uh, we are going to store a integer as i sequence files in HDFS, and each sequence file contains j records. So here is the parallel FFT uh, algorithm. So in step one, we first compute i in the DFTs. Each DFT has j data point. Uh, in, for this uh, i in the DFT, we compute in parallel. And then we compute a compromise shifting. And then we compute a transposition. The transposition is going to use all, uh, we distribute all the intermediate results. And the final step, we are going to compute a j outer DFTs. And each DFT has i data point. So does this step look familiar with to you? So let's take a look at our map reduce model. So we have a uh, map, shuffle, and reduce. And let's take a look map reduce FFT. So we have inner FFT, transposition, and outer FFT. So we can see that these two ideas uh, match very well. Uh, we can perform transposition with shuffle by our design. And FFT transposition traditionally is very hard to do because we want to preserve data, data locality. However, in map video, it becomes trivial. The reason is that uh, in, uh, in map video, the shuffle already preserves uh, data locality for you. You don't have to do anything. And here is our map video's algorithm. Uh, we have two functions. We have a map function. Map function is, in the map function, we mainly compute a J-point uh, DFT, and then we compute a component line modification. And in our video function, we are going to compute an I-point DFT. And once we finish the DFT, we got the product polynomial. Then we, we uh, the, however, the coefficient may be too large, and we are going to do, perform a normalization. And normalization can be viewed as a summation of three integer. So we have to deal, deal with integer summation. Uh, in integer summation, uh, it can be done by three steps. In first step, we have compromise summation. And then in second step, we have uh, carry evaluation. And in the first step, we have parallel carrying. 
So does this look familiar with you, this three step? So let's take a look at our map reduce model again. So we have map, shuffle, and reduce. And then let's take a look at our map reduce sum. So we have parallel submission, carry, carry evasion, and carrying. So here, in the carrier evasion, we need to perform some arithmetic. So we are going to update the intermediate results. In the current map reduce model, uh, or in Hadoop, we cannot do it. And we need to wait for the next generation of map reduce. Uh, we have to implement our application uh, search manager to, to do that. So in, the current, in, in, uh, in our current version, we have to split into two jobs. So in the first job, we, we perform a parallel submission. It's a map-only job. And then in the second job, we are going to use a single map to compute the carry relation. And then we are going to have a par parallel carrying in the reduce. So here are the, uh, our map reduce SSA. So we totally have five jobs. So we have two input major, and then we perform two for FFT. And then we perform a uh, parallel FFT. So in the map of the parallel FFT, we are going to perform the component-wise modification. And in the reduce, we are going, before we write the output to the disk, uh, we are going to split it into three integers first, and then uh, write to the disk. Once we have the uh, split integer, and we can perform a submission, and we are going to do it with two jobs. The first one will be compromise submission, and then we perform a carrying. So we have a prototype implementation. It's called uh, distributed multiplication multiplication. It, in, it includes uh, distributed FFT, and also included distributed compromise submission and distributed carrying. Everything is open source. Uh, it's available in this year, uh, Map Video 2471. So if you're interested, you can take a look. Uh, we have done some experiments. Um, so uh, I think today I may not have enough time to cover that, so let's skip these two slides. If we have time, then we can come back. So now let's go to the third part of the talk. Uh, about a new world record and the machine behind the computation. So first of all, uh, what is pi? Pi is a mathematical constant such that for any circle, pi is a ratio between the circumference and the diameter. So we have pi is equal to 3.244. So uh, any question? <laughs> so it's in hexadecimal, huh? So uh, we may represent pi in decimal. We usually represent pi in decimal, so it's 3.14159265353, et cetera. And we may also represent pi in hexadecimal or in binary. When we represent pi in binary, we may count the bit position. And the bit position is counted after the very next point. For example, the 8 bit starting at the 9th bit position is uh, 00111111 in binary or 3F in hexadecimal. And in July 2010, uh, the Yahoo Calculating team, uh, we computed uh, a new world record. Uh, we, uh, we used the idle slice of 1,000 node clusters. And each node had two core, core CPU, and the frequency is from uh, 1.8 to 2.5 gigahertz. And the entire computation took uh, 23 days. Uh, uh, we used uh, 500 and three years of CPU time. And this is our first computation. And we perform a second computation. And in the second computation, the parameters are all different. So the, all the intermediate steps are different. Uh, and the second computation took uh, 582 years of CPU time uh, for verification. Um, uh, why it takes a slightly longer time, uh, the reason is that we use two different clusters. So the second computation is one in a slower cluster, so it takes a little bit longer time. Uh, here is our new world record. It's uh, COE, 6 c 1294 etc. Uh, we totally have uh, 256 bits. Uh, the first bit position is uh, 2 quadrillion minus 3, and the last bit position is 2 quadrillion plus 252. And the 2 quadrillion bit of pi is 0. So 2 quadrillion is uh, 2 times 10 to the 15. Uh, we finished the computation in July uh, 2010, and then we posted a paper uh, in August 2010. And after we posted the paper, there are many reporters, and uh, uh, they contact me, uh, they ask me questions. And in September 2010, uh, there are lots of news uh, covering our work and our results. Uh, for example, in September 16, 
the BBC News have, have an article talking about our results. And then on September 17, uh, the New Scientist magazine, they have an article talking about our results. And we have many other news coverage. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, we have ACM, uh, The Register, Radio News and News, CD Lab, uh, Engager, Slash Dog, Gather, Maximum PC, uh, O'Reilly Radar, Parada, Texas, Hard OCP, uh, Repo News, Read Right Cloud, Titan News, uh, etc. So, uh, how to compute the nth bit of pi? Uh, I think I don't have time to go through this in this talk, so let's ignore this question for the moment and focus on how to execute such huge computation. Um, for, in order to execute, uh, for this work, uh, we developed a generic framework to execute tasks on either the map side or the reduce side. So this uh, framework is generic, so any application can use it. Uh, application only had to define two functions. The fu first function is partition. So given a part, uh, computation C and an integer M, you need to tell me how to partition the computation into M parts. And the second function is compute. So you need to tell me how to execute your computation. Uh, for the math side job, uh, it contains multiple mappers and serial reducers. So we have an input format called partition input format. It's going to read the input uh, computation C and the integer M, and then it's going to partition the computation into M part. And for each part, it uh, launch a mapper. And we also have a reduce side job. It contains a single mapper and multiple reducer. So we have a singleton input format. It's going to read the input and then forward all the input to the partition mapper. And the partition mapper is going to partition the computation into M part and forward all the computation to an indexer. And the indexer is going to uh, launch a reduce task for each computation. So with this framework, we have a, an abstract class called machine. And machine is an abstract based class, so it, allow, it allows us to uh, it allows abstract one to execute machine computable tasks. So here everything is very abstract. Uh, we have some conquest uh, machine subclass. We have a map side machine. We have video side machine. So for example, we may specify a map side machine by m hundred tv. So it's going to launch a job with hundred map, uh, and then each task will use free fact to execute the computation. So uh, similarly, we, have, uh, we may specify R50 T2. Then uh, it's going to execute a video side job. And the job is going to contain 50 reducer. And each task is going to use two frags to execute. And we have some more machines. So we have mixed machine. Uh, uh, mixed machine will uh, choose map side job or video side job according to the cursor status. And we also have alternation machine. So alternation machine is uh, you specify pattern, then the machine is going to follow your pattern to submit job. And we also have now machine. Now machine uh, is for testing. So you, you want to make sure that uh, you specify everything correctly before you really uh, execute your job. Uh, in our system, we monitor the cursor status. So we, uh, so we try to utilize the, the idle slice of our cursor. So we monitor the cursor status. So when there are available uh, slots, we are going to submit a job. Uh, when there are available map side, uh, uh, when there are available map slot, we are going to submit a map side job. And similarly, we, when there are available video side slot, uh, we are going to submit a video side job. And we keep our job small, uh, so that it holds resources only for a short period of time. And we also make our computation interoperable and resumable. Uh, we can uh, interrupt our computation anytime by simply queuing all the running job. And later on, we can restart our system. Then the system is going to pick up all the intermediate value and then resume the computation. So here is a table. Um, uh, it's a, from the job checker UI. Uh, sorry that the phone is uh, too small. Uh, what is table showing is that uh, I were submitting some job. And what am I, what I try to do is uh, I try to compute the two quadrillion bits of pi. So here you can see that uh, we 
have a few reduce side job in the beginning, and then we have some math side job, and then we have some reduce side job. So the computation uh, uh, keep running like that, so it will monitor the cursor status. So when there's uh, enough slot idle, then I'm going to submit a job. And we have these uh, two programs uh, for, for in our implementation. So the first one is a distributed BBP, and the second one is a distributed sum. So we are open source, so everything is available in uh, this year, MapReduce 1923. Uh, for the real record computation, uh, we have 35,000 MapReduce jobs. So each job either has uh, 200 map tasks, and each task has one fact each, or 100 reduce tasks with uh, two fact each. And each fact compute 200 million terms, so it took about 45 minutes. So we may submit up to uh, 60 concurrent jobs, and the entire computation took uh, 23 days of build time and 503 years of CPU time. So for the talk today, uh, we, uh, if you don't like to have more details, you can take a look at these two papers. Uh, and thank you. <laughs> so do you have any questions? I'm, I'm curious about the state of where things are for numerical processing, such as the larger traditional packages like you see with LayPack and other systems. And are there efforts underway, particularly sponsored by Yahoo or other groups that are pushing to make those similar packages uh, available? Um, I think, uh, from what I know, uh, it, it seems that no one is working on such package. Uh, Actually, myself is very interested in doing that, if I have time. Uh, I, yeah, that's all, yeah. I, I, I think no one is working on such package. I have a question. Oh, sorry. Hey. From the standpoint of Mahout, we have uh, several general purpose packages for distributed matrix computation. They're not as general as LayPack, but they do provide many of these sort of functionalities that you might be interested on, Mo. My question is more generally, uh, why make this a Hadoop JIRA? I mean, is this really an important part of Hadoop, or is this really better as a separate package entirely? Oh, uh, actually, uh, this is a good question. Uh, uh, I make this JIRA is, uh, for people so that they can take a look at uh, the code and comment on that and give me some comments. Uh, I, okay. Uh, I probably should have uh, maybe start a, another project for such a math, uh, math video math library uh, instead of putting everything to Hadoop. So, uh, dumb question. Did you try uh, computing your pi using a GPU processor? GPU processor. Uh, okay. In our current work, we uh, use uh, Hadoop. Uh, so, uh, in our system, we, we don't utilize GPU, so I, can, I, I don't have to do anything special for GPU. Okay. But, uh, but in our program, I do try to utilize all the CPU and all the resources, something like that. So it's purely a compute job, right? So it's a world record, so you have bragging rights. Is there any practical import here? Are there any real applications that more than three people would want to use that this would facilitate? Uh, okay, uh, I present, I give a similar presentation in a math conference. Uh, mathematics, uh, some mathematicians, uh, they, they very interested in such work. Uh, for example, uh, they uh, work on research of uh, try to understand the digits of pi uh, they want to understand whether uh, the, the digit of pi is follow a normal distribution, something like that. And this kind of, uh, this kind of research, uh, this kind of question is still unanswered un until now. So we don't know whether the digit of pi is, uh, is the normality of pi. Yeah. So uh, in such case, very useful. Uh, for computing, oh yeah. 
So uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> no, yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I think this is very useful in the mathematical community. Yeah. They're interested in this kind of problem. <laughs>